OK. So let's do one last example. OK, so you are playing a dice game with a friend. They brought a six-sided die that you think may not be fair. So meaning it rolls more one way than the other. <clears throat> you conduct an experiment to determine if it is fair. You roll the die 100 times and get the following. OK, so it didn't give you any warm-up to this, right? There was no, like, here's the type of test we're doing. So what type of test is this? OK, well, this little table, right, this is, can kind of be a hint. Like, if you see this, you're going to start thinking something. <clears throat> so do we have a categorical variable? So we actually do. It may not seem like it because with the number, we have one, two, three, four, five, or six. But on a dice, that's completely categorical, right? It's not like one is less than six. It's a side, and we could, we could have a green dot on one side, a red dot on the other, and that would be the same as putting a one on one side and a six on the other, OK? So the side that, it ro that a dice rolls, in this case, is just a category. We can't order it, OK? And do we have another one? Another category. Nope, we only have the side of the dice that shows up when we roll it. So if we have a categorical variable that has more than two options, right? So we have six options, we should be starting to think, OK, that's chi-squared. And because we only have one categorical variable, not two, then we know it must be a chi-squared goodness of fit test. So let's go through all of our steps. So first one. We're going to calculate, or sorry, we're going to write out the hypothesis. <clears throat> so our null hypothesis is that P1 equals P2 equals P3 equals P4 equals P5 equals P6. Now remember, the reason I have them all equaling each other is because no one said, here's the distribution I expect. But a fair die, right, the status quo is that the dice side should all be equal. And here I can call it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, because that actually is the name of each side. And then my alternative is that at least 1 is not equal. OK? Now I'm going to calculate my expected counts. So we know that there are 100 rolls, and we know that there are six options, which means these are our observed counts. But our expected should be a sixth, a sixth, a sixth, a sixth, a sixth, and a sixth. And a sixth of 100 equals 100 divided by 6 equals 16.67. We'll round it. OK, so we now know that all of our expected counts is 16.67. So none of these are less than 5. We're assuming that it's a, hundred, there, it's a random sample. It's not really because you did it all in a row. But of all the dice rolling that could be out there, it's probably random, right, um, that you picked to do this example now. I mean, it's kind of a weak argument this is a random sample. But for this case, it's OK. We can just say that we're assuming it's random. We should assume if it's independent, right? One roll shouldn't affect the next roll. And then we know that our cell counts are all greater than 5. So we're good to go. But remember, only 80% has to be greater than 5. But in this case, they're all greater than 5, so we're good. We calculated our expected. We checked our conditions. We're going to calculate. So remember that chi squared is going to be our observed minus expected. So let's do it for the first and the last. So our observed, and actually. I'll write it out, just because we should get in the habit of writing out the equation. OK, so it is 17 minus 16.67 squared plus dot, 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 because we're just saying fill in the middle. The last one, which is 10 minus 16.67. OK, so in order to do this, we're going to put it into a list. So stat, enter. We're going to clear our list out first. Oops. OK, so our observed goes in list 1. So we have 17, 24, 15, 22, 12, 
10, and then our observed. And actually, if you really want to get precise decimal-wise, <coughs> we can make these, this all say 100. And bear with me here. So we're just going to put 100 into all of these. So this is an easy way to do this. Okay, and then here in this list, you'll put the proportion that should be in each. So if you had different proportions, you'd list them in each, but we don't. So what we're going to do is just say 100, which is list 2, divided by 1 6. They're divided by 6. Sorry, that did not get to be list 2. List 2 divided by 6. <clears throat> and then now we have our expected cell counts and all those, and it has a ton of decimals, so we'll get a really precise number. Okay, so then before we do that, I should note where I put everything. So the observed was list 1. My expected was list 3, right? It's important to keep track of it. So now on list 4, I'm going to highlight the top, and I'm going to say my observed counts, which move this over real quickly. My observed counts, list 1, minus my expected counts, which are in list 3, all squared, close parentheses, divided by my expected counts, which are all in list 3. Perfect. So now I have all my chi-squared contributions, and I can look, and it looks like the 6 made the biggest, oh no, sorry, the <clears throat> the 2 made the biggest contribution. So the 2 and the 6 were the most that were like off. Actually, the 1 was pretty far off too. So, or actually, no, sorry. The 2 and the 6 were the farthest off. They were the biggest, right? So they were the highest contribution to, to chi-squared mean. They were the furthest from expected. Okay, so let's add it up. Quit. So we'll go second stat, which gets us to our list. We go over to math, and we're going to sum list 4. So our chi-squared should be 9.08. And because we always want to check our math when we have a calculator that can let us, we're going to go stat, test, we're going to scroll down to chi-squared. Oops, that was the wrong chi-squared. So let me quit. Stat, test, we're going to chi-squared goodness of fix. We're doing a goodness of fit test. We know our observed is in list 1, but now, I remember I put my expected in list 3, so make sure you change this. And then degrees of freedom. What are my degrees of freedom? Well, I have six different categories, right, because it's six sides to a dice, minus 1, so I have five degrees of freedom. Calculate, and there we go. Chi-squared is 9.08. So we have 9.08, and then my p-value is 0.106. 0 0.106, and just because <clears throat> we should always know how to do it by looking it up, let's look at the table as well. So remember, in this case, we have four, or sorry, we have five degrees of freedom. Sorry. So we're going to go to the five degrees of freedom category, and we know that our um, test statistic was 9.06, so all we know is that it's somewhere between these two. So all we know is that from the table, right, is the p-value is greater than 0 0.10 but less than 0.90. Okay, so you could have that range if all you had was the table. But all that really matters is that it's greater than whatever value it's greater than. Okay, so even easier than that, we looked it up on our calculator. We see that p is 0.106. So, if our p-value is 0 0.106 and our alpha we're using is 0 0.05, we're saying that's greater. So, right, we fail to reject the null hypothesis, right, because our p-value is really large. It's a pretty big probability that HO is true. <clears throat> and we do not have evidence to support the claim that the dice, the die singular, is 
unfair. Perfect. 